This video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is the leading virtual private network that protects your online identity, whether you're at an airport, coffee shop, or anywhere. We'll talk more about NordVPN later in the video, but for now, let's get on with how to be successful from the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche was a German philosopher, cultural critic, composer, poet, and philologist who is widely known for his unconventional ideas about morality and religion. He was one of the main precursors of existentialism, and although his ideas were controversial among the traditional thinkers, he showed people the true nature of life and how individuals can shape their future with independent thought. He wrote some of the most magnificent books the world has ever seen. Some notable mentions are Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Beyond Good and Evil, and Twilight of the Idols. According to Nietzsche, to be successful means to live life to the fullest, following your own mission in life and your own values. His teachings have shaped the lives of many people, from psychologists to poets, dancers to several successful modern-day entrepreneurs. So with that in mind, here are five lessons from Friedrich Nietzsche which we can adopt in our lives in order to be successful. Number 1. Don't follow the herd. Nietzsche says, I mistrust all systems and avoid them. The will to a system is a lack of integrity. Nietzsche was a stubborn advocate of individuality, and he often warned us of the dangers of losing our free will and integrity while trying to fit into a system. His famous term, herd mentality, represents a tendency that the average mob exhibits while acting out their systemic roles. They're gathered around a central ideal, and they're following it blindly. However, that usually comes with a nasty trade-off. You get the security of belonging to a group and having each other's back, but you lose any real sense of authentic individuality. Groups have a tendency to exclude people and ideas that seem strange to them. You could have an ingenious idea that's far beyond people you're surrounded by, and they may meet your swaying away from the norm with disapproval. In those situations, they're trying to cling to their idols, which can be both real people and ideologies, and they think that your individuality and free thinking will undermine the short-term security of the herd. Real-world examples of this highly abstract concept are everywhere around us. Imagine a young and up-and-coming entrepreneur trying to get their ideas out there in order to create a well-functioning business that's both profitable and of great benefit to society and the environment. While implementing their noble goal, they often face resistance from the very people that are afraid of change. Imagine that you were the first person to suggest the audiobook format. Firstly, you'd get a lot of resistance from some of the readers that are way too attached to the material object of a printed book, not to mention the stress of having the audiobook format appear on the market and be ready to compete with the long-standing consumer habit of buying a physical book. Both readers and book publishing companies would desperately try to keep the things as they used to be initially. This is exactly what holding on to your idols means. This is what they're doing by insisting upon keeping the status quo. They might simply just not see the big picture. But if you don't give up and keep moving forward, you will end up creating a new business model that in this case offers job positions as well as a new consumer habit that's way better for the environment because it doesn't exploit the precious lungs of our world, our trees. The problem with most of us is we give up on our endeavour as soon as we face the slightest resistance. We think of it as a permanent setback. Nietzsche, however, warns us about the resistance that you may face while challenging the status quo of the herd. And you may fall into nihilistic traps of believing that nothing really makes sense and that there's nothing worth fighting for. You'll feel like giving up because of the emotional pain you are experiencing while trying to get your ideas across. In this case, Nietzsche advises us not to give up and to keep moving forward. Number 2. Embrace your inner Dionysus According to Nietzsche, 
you must have chaos within you to give birth to a dancing star. Nietzsche, in his book, Thus Spake Zarathustra, emphasized the importance of being in touch with your chaotic side because chaos highly correlates with creativity, one of the primary drivers in our lives. Every new situation is symbolically represented as chaos or as the unknown and our creativity is our ability to adapt to new situations. To be creative is to be spiritually healthy and nobody embodies that creative spirit better than Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, religious ecstasy and fertility. According to Nietzsche, we must be in touch with our inner Dionysus, our creativity to navigate through chaos and to be truly spiritually healthy. Our so-called routines, on the other hand, are in the domain of order, rationality and the known. Take the regular 9 to 5 lifestyle of today. You repeat the same old routine while at work and once you get home, you tend to give in to the pattern of consumption that is the overarching ideal of our modern day lifestyle. The more we spend on food and shopping and the more time we spend mindlessly consuming social media content, the more our creativity tends to get atrophied and we look for an easy way to escape the unpleasant chaotic situation and retreat into the soothing comfort that our modern day lifestyle so easily affords us. The harsh reality is the more we escape, the tougher it gets to confront the chaos and uncertainty. Because our capacity to deal with the unknown diminishes, we feel even more anxious about the idea of getting out and living, which makes the products of the comfort industry that much more appealing. We are caught in a vicious cycle. Our inner Dionysus tends to die off in our westernized, rational and comfortable environments. Similar to the duality of yin and yang, each of us have two main sides to our personality. A rational one, the consciousness, the responsible, Apollonian side, similar to Yang, and an instinctual one, the subconscious, emotional, Dionysian side, which is similar to Yin. In Nietzsche's view, the way to be successful or to achieve any greatness is by the way of achieving a harmonious totality, which is to balance the two parts of yourself. The Apollonian side, Apollo being the Greek god of sun, of knowledge, and the Dionysian side, Dionysus being the complete opposite, the god of wine, fertility, and madness. You have to be organized, responsible, logical, but at the same time, leave room for the more artistic part of yourself, your creative side, your emotional side. According to research, business leaders who are innovative, who can think of new ideas that are more likely to be successful, every business or any kind of commercial setup must be able to compete with its competitors and keep up with the latest trends in the industry. You will have to make some decisions to ensure that the productivity of the business increases. To do that, you need to be creative to discover different ways of doing things to achieve a better result. Number 3. Find a father. Nietzsche advises us that whoever does not have a good father should procure one. Nietzsche's own father, a Lutheran minister, died when he was just five years old. It is known that he loved his father very much and that his father's absence was painful. Soon after his father passed away, he lost his brother and Nietzsche was raised by his mother alongside his two sisters. Having lost his own father at a young age and after experiencing various strained relationships, Nietzsche recognized the importance of a strong, encouraging guide in life. In business, this could be translated into finding a good mentor to inspire and guide you. Whether you're running a startup or you're a manager in an organization, there will be many challenges that will come your way. A mentor is someone who's been there, done that. They are someone you can turn to, ask questions and get advice. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg was mentored by Steve Jobs. Jobs was mentored by Mike Markler, 
an early investor and executive at Apple, and Eric Schmidt mentored Larry Page and Sergey Brin of Google. The connection between a mentor and a mentee can be the most powerful relationship not only in your professional lives, but also in your personal lives. If you want to learn any instrument, let's say you want to learn the guitar, you'd go to someone who already knows how to play it. Similarly, when you realize an area in your life like your marriage, for example, needs improvement, or when you set out to do something like run a marathon, having that encouraging mentor is extremely important, as it will influence what you do and how you eventually turn out. So, if you want to be successful, align yourself with someone who has succeeded in a similar pursuit. We cannot allow ourselves to think we have all the answers, because we never will. Which is why having a mentor will help you turn the daily adversities of life into successful habits which will build your internal resilience. For your personal achievements and improvements, your mentor could be your friends, family or colleagues who've already achieved the goal you're working towards. And for your professional pursuits, you can find great mentors in professional networking events, online mentorship networks, industry meetups, and on dedicated websites like LinkedIn. Number 4. Have a clear vision for the future As we learn from Nietzsche, the future influences the present as much as the past. The will of power, which also means the will to live, is one central concept in Nietzsche's philosophy, and will is, by definition, directed towards the future. This vision of the future shapes one's present reality as much as the memories of the past. According to Nietzsche, the will of power is what gives us reality, is what makes us who we are. The way you see your future has a big influence on how much you enjoy life and how confident you can be in achieving your goals. Things are no different in the world of business. A company evolves as long as it has a clear vision over the future, smart goals, and a set of strategies to deal with potential failures. As an entrepreneur, the way you see yourself in one year, in five years, in ten years, will shape the way you create your business plans, the way you talk to other people, and the way you negotiate. It will also shape the very way you view your own story. If you know where you're going and have a strong vision of the future, then you'll tend to remember the key moments from your past that are particularly relevant to your journey towards that specific future. If you see yourself becoming a millionaire in five years, then your failure to complete a PhD might be a fortunate event as it has prevented you from wasting three to five years of your life in universities instead of starting your business. One of the most important steps in having a successful business is to create an overarching vision of how your business will look in the short and long term. And you need to write down what kind of mentality a person who conducts that kind of business should have how they should behave in business negotiations, how much risk they should take, and so on. Then you need to incorporate this mentality into your daily activities. Fake it until you make it, so to speak. For example, if you own a restaurant, you might create a vision to have five restaurants after five years. And you will see soon enough that the way you speak with high-level clients will change, and you will attract potential investors towards you they will sense you're aiming towards something big. The other aspect of having such a vision of the future is that you will see your past failures not as failures per se, but rather as lessons. For example, you won't blame yourself anymore for wanting to introduce a new menu which lowered sales last time. Instead, now you see the event as an experiment from which you will have collected precious information on your customers' preferences. Number 5. Get Stronger In our final quote from Nietzsche for this video, he reminds us, Out of life's school of war, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Researchers from Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management have established a casual relationship between failure and future success, proving Nietzsche's adage that what does not kill me makes me stronger. 
In contrast to their initial expectations, they found that early failure in one's career leads to greater success in the long term for those who try again. Nietzsche's life itself was full of suffering on an emotional and physical level as well as on a professional one. He lived most of his life wandering in the Alpine mountains where he wrote some of the most magnificent books the world has ever seen. Sadly, he didn't get much recognition and wasn't able to sell much of his work. At age 44, he had a mental breakdown while watching a horse being beaten by his driver. He ran over to the horse and said, I understand you. He never recovered from this tragedy and his mental breakdown took his life after 11 years. However, in spite of his tragic life, Nietzsche was also able to encourage the millions of people out there who are scared to try and pursue their interests because of a perceived failure. Most of us are just happy to live in the comfort of our cocoon, not willing to take any risks in life, avoiding any danger. We're afraid of getting out of our comfort zone because we fear failure and because of our fear of failure, we always copy others in our herd and never fully live up to our potential. We need to realize that the most significant progress made in any field has been the realm of those who stood high on the verge of failing, yet never yielded. Failure is always guaranteed and inevitable. Failure doesn't mean your idea wasn't valid or that your dream isn't good enough. Failure simply means there is something to be learned or another direction to be taken. If you've just opened up a new business, say a restaurant, and have been suffering with losses, try to use your frustration, anger or sadness to motivate you to be creative. Figure out the problem behind your losses. It could be the taste or the lack of variety in your menu, or it could be the ambience. Take the necessary feedback from your customers and then aggressively work on improving it. Don't let the fear of a new possible failure stand in your way. Find meaning in your suffering and learn from the experience. As we said at the beginning, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. Typically, when you try and access a website on the internet, you start by connecting to your internet service provider and they redirect you to any websites that you wish to visit, which means they can see and log everything you do online. They may even sell your browsing history to advertisers, government agencies and other third parties. This risk only increases once you log on to any public hotspot, either in hotels, cafes or at airports. Anyone with even basic hacking skills could access your passwords, banking details, credit card numbers and any other private details you send every time you go online. Here's where NordVPN comes into play. It tunnels your internet traffic through a specially configured remote server. This way, NordVPN hides your IP address and encrypts all the data you send or receive. The encrypted data looks like gibberish to anyone who intercepts it. It's impossible to read. All of us here at Philosophies for Life use NordVPN. The app makes using a VPN super easy. Nord has over 5,200 superfast servers in 59 countries. This means you can watch whatever you want regardless of your region. You can save your favorite servers and depending on your usability, you can have up to six simultaneous connections. At just $3.56 a month, this is a great chance to get a two-year deal. Click on the link in the description and use our promo code to get NordVPN's special birthday offer, where with every purchase of a two-year plan, you'll get a surprise gift and one additional month of NordVPN's membership for free. Click on the link in the description below to protect your online identity today. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to check out our full Stoicism playlist and for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.